Hi Luna, I welcome you on board this session. In this session, we will be seeing about equivalent calibrated and indicated airspeeds. This topic is entitled to the subject flight mechanics. The target audience of this session are gate aerospace aspirants, aerospace and aeronautical engineering students. We have been following the flight mechanics syllabus for gate aerospace engineering. And in this session, we will be covering this specific portion of the syllabus. In the previous lecture, we did see about the pressure altitude. The link to this video lecture will be provided in the right top corner as video cards. Now let's get an outline of this session. We will be knowing about the types of airspeeds and the unit conversion in under the topic airspeeds. And next we will be moving on to uh, the measurement technique of air speeds we will be knowing about the static and total pressure we will be determining the velocity and we will be deriving the equation which is used to determine the air speed next we will be defining the types of air speeds that is the indicator calibrated and uh, equivalent air speed additionally we, we will be discussing about the true air speed let's get started so what is air speed speed is a non a dimensional it is a dimensional quantity but it is a scalar unit of velocity that is speed has a unit such as meter per second but it doesn't have a direction so it is termed as a scalar quantity so air speed is the speed of the aircraft relative to air so there are four different types of air speeds namely indicated air speed calibrated air speed equivalent air speed and true air speed. They are uh, termed as uh, IAS, CAS, EAS, and TAS. They're, these are the acronyms for it. And uh, one other thing to be noted is that uh, commonly in uh, aeronautical engineering, uh, the airspeed is measured in knots. So when we are using it for uh, engineering calculations, we mostly follow SI units in India. So we have to know the conversion rate or the factor in order to answer these questions. One knot, so knot is a acronym or a short form of nautical miles per hour, which was used uh, in uh, naval purposes earlier and it was transformed as it is to the aeronautical purposes. So one knot will be equal to 0 0.514 uh, times the meter per second in meter per second unit and it one knot is also equal to 1.852 kilometer per hour which is equal to 1.15 miles per hour this is the unit conversion rate which we need to be familiar of in order to answer these questions and one, one other thing to be noted over here is that this airspeed indicator has two different types of uh, airspeed which it is indicating the IAS indicated airspeed and the TAS. There are two dials which are fitted within this instrument. So we will know about the measurement of airspeed. So as we know airspeed is the speed of the aircraft relative to air. So how do we measure it? Airspeed is generally measured by using pitot static tube. We will be discussing about this pitot static tube in detail. The flow velocity is typically measured through the pressure difference. So if we measure the pressure difference, that is the difference between pressure, uh, the difference between the total pressure and the static pressure, we can obtain the flow velocity we need to know what is static and total pressure so static pressure denoted by small p is the pressure felt at a point when moving along with the flow at that point we will be seeing an example further in the further part of the session so uh, the static pressure is measured by a static port now getting to knowing about uh, total pressure it is denoted by p naught the total pressure is the pressure experienced if the flow were to be slowed down isentropically to a zero velocity. 
it is generally measured by using pitot tube. Here we are having three different types of instruments. So it is a simple pitot tube and it is used for measuring the total pressure. And we have a static source which is used to determine the static pressure. And uh, we are having the combination of these both. So this is the pitot static tube which can measure both the uh, uh, total pressure and static pressure. So here this portion measures the static pressure and uh, this portion measures the total pressure and when a dial gauge is uh, fitted to the end of it we can uh, read the differential pressure thus the velocity can be obtained. One thing to be noted over here is that the total pressure is always greater than the static pressure and uh, it can be equal to the static pressure in the cases if such as the stagnant gas which is present in the room if the air isn't moving so why is it so we will be seeing with an example okay let's assume that uh, your friend and uh, you are uh, traveling in a car at 60 kilometers per hour all the windows of the car are closed and inside the car along with you there is a fly buzzing around in a very random fashion so uh, the car is basically traveling at 60 km per hour so you your friend and the fly are uh, traveling at 60 km per hour too so additionally the fly is buzzing around with a ra random velocity that is it is having an additional velocity which helps it to buzz around or fly so uh, this fly consider that uh, suddenly uh, this fly stings you so it has a velocity superimposed on it that is all, all three of you that is you your friend and uh, the fly are traveling at 60 km per hour and the fly is having an additional velocity which is superimposed on the top of the mean velocity 60 km per hour so it would be traveling at about uh, 61 or 62 km per hour so now consider that uh, the fly uh, suddenly uh, hits your skin with a random motion you will feel, uh, feel a slight impact right this slight impact is similar to the static pressure so the static pressure in a flowing glass uh, the static pressure is due simply to the random motion of the molecules so in case of aircraft when you uh, replace the fly with the air molecule this random motion which is felt by the aircraft is analogous to the static pressure so now the case of uh, total pressure assume that uh, you open the window of your car and the fly buzzes out so the consider that uh, a person is standing on the sidewalk and along the side of road so if the fly and uh, which just left your car it's the skin of this person standing on the sidewalk the impact will be strong because the fly will hit this person with a mean velocity of 60 km per hour plus whatever its random velocity may be so the strength of the impact is analogous to total temperature of gas so this was a simplistic example provided by jd anderson so in this case the fly will be hitting at about uh, consider that the fly is uh, flying around uh, one kilometer per hour uh, speed so fly so in this case the fly will be hitting the person at about uh, 61 kilometer per hour speed so it may really hurt so in the first case the fly will be hitting you at about one kilometer per hour you can see the huge difference between the total pressure and uh, static per pressure terms so this is why the total pressure is always or in the most of the cases greater than the static pressure now we will getting to know about the method of determining the velocity 
we have known the measurement technique of airspeed now how do we derive it or how do we attain it we need to determine the velocity so in order to determine the velocity we need the Bernoulli's equation which is indeed derived from the momentum equation for the case of momentum equation let us consider an infinitely small fluid element so uh, this is an infinitely small fluid element when we enlarge it we can see it is a volume and uh, it has six different phases let us uh, have these coordinate systems so this is uh, x-axis similarly the y-axis and uh, z-axis so consider that uh, there is a differential pressure on uh, either side of the phases because the fluid element is in static it is moving so there will always be a differential pressure consider that uh, there is a pressure applied that is p the pressure applied on the left phase which is acting towards the fluid element and uh, there is another pressure applied the p plus uh, change in pressure dp by dx times dx which is applied on the right side phase also towards the fluid element so we can see that uh, in this fluid elements there are basically three different types of forces acting that is the pressure force so uh, gravity force also will be acting as this has a volume and it indeed has some mass and additionally friction forces will also be acting so uh, when we consider this our objective is to derive the uh, relation between pressure and uh, velocity so in this case we will be neglecting the gravity and friction for the case of simplicity for deriving a relation between uh, pressure and velocity we will be using the famous newton second law we know that uh, according to newton second law force equals to mass times acceleration which is uh, simplified as f equal to ma so here the force which we are talking about is the pressure force this is the force which we are uh, talking about so the net force in x direction now we are considering only one particular direction that is the x direction so the particular force on it uh, by neglecting the gravity and friction is the summation of the forces in that particular direction so there are two forces and the direction is opposite to each other let us consider this uh, direction as positive and uh, this direction as negative so here there is a uh, pressure force uh, the basic pressure force plus an additional change in pressure times the dx which is the uh, change in length when we add both of those p dy by uh, dy times dz uh, which is nothing but we know that pressure is uh, formulated as force by area so for force can be obtained as uh, pressure times area so we are taking the pressure force and uh, we are multiplying with the uh, area in which it is being applied so area is typically uh, this region so it is uh, basically the um, product of dy and dz so dy times dz so here it is p pressure times area dy times dz minus minus uh, is used as the uh, force is applied in the reverse direction of x-axis plus uh, p plus dp by dx times dx so this is the change in pressure term and uh, dx uh, is the change in distance so uh, here this pressure times area this is the pressure term and uh, the area is same dy dz so when we uh, further simplify it we can see that uh, this term and uh, this term gets cancelled out and we will be remaining with uh, minus dp by dx times dx dy dz so this terms to be the volume now consider this as equation one now we need to uh, determine the right hand side of the equation that is mass times acceleration mass as we know is the product of uh, density and volume v here is the volume 
so volume can also be written as dx dy dz so dx dy dz which will produce as the volume the fluid element okay we have obtained the mass so acceleration is nothing but the rate of change of velocity so it is dv by dt now uh, we have to see that uh, the pressure change uh, or change in pressure is in terms of dx or uh, in change of length and here it is in terms of time it is differentiated with respect to time so we need to convert it in uh, terms of length that is dx terms so we are basically uh, multiplying a uh, multiplying and dividing a dx term so when we multiply and divide it by a dx term we can uh, distribute it such that uh, of this kind of equation and we also know that uh, velocity is nothing but uh, the distance by uh, time uh, from the formula speed is equal to distance by time taken so this can be replaced by the term velocity v over here is velocity and dv by dx remains as it is and here we can see that uh, the uh, change in velocity dv uh, is in terms of uh, distance dx not in the time of uh, term of dt that is uh, time so we have obtained the mass times acceleration term when we combine these both so uh, rho of dx dy dz times v dv by dx so consider this as second equation now when we apply these uh, both the equations 1 and 2 in the basic formula of Newton's second law f equal to ma we have already derived the value of f as uh, minus dp by dx times dx dy dz so when we uh, substitute it in this equation so f can be substituted as this and uh, ma from uh, equation 2 so here we can see that uh, the common terms gets cancelled out so dx dy dz term gets cancelled out and dx is also common so it also gets cancelled out we will be remaining with uh, the term dp equal to minus rho v dv so we have basically transferred the negative sign to the right hand side of the equation this particular equation is known as the Euler equation or Euler equation uh, this is basically also known as momentum equation so this is a pretty important equation and the importance of it is that it forms the basis for uh, the Bernoulli's equation and the cases which these are uh, this equation is applicable is that uh, the gravity's effect should not be considered so uh, it has to be an inviscid flow that is there is no friction no friction and uh, and uh, it also has to be uh, an in, uh, incompressible flow. Now let's apply this to the aeronautical uh, application. Let us consider a wing uh, in a flow and let us take two points, point one and point two. So point one is in the forward uh, stream upstream and uh, point two is in the downstream at about midpoint of the surface of uh, airfoil. So at point one, the pressure and velocity are termed as P1 and V1. At point two, the uh, pressure and velocity are P2 and V2. Now, uh, considering the Euler's or uh, momentum equation, uh, when we transfer this uh, minus rho V dV to the left hand side of the equation, it, um, uh, it transforms as uh, plus rho V dV. Uh, and uh, this has to be uh, summated to zero as there is no term on the right hand side so uh, as the flow is incompressible the density can be considered as constant and when we integrate the values that is the differential values pressure and velocity between these two points one and two we can obtain the Bernoulli's equation we are integrating this equation and uh, we know that the integration of dp is uh, uh, p2 minus p1 and uh, when we integrate uh, the rho is constant so we have taken it as uh, common outside so v times dv the integration formula is provided over here the integration of x bar n times dx is equal to x bar n plus 1 divided by the n plus 1 term so here we can replace the x with v 
and uh, n with 1. So we will be obtaining such kind of equation and the subscripts 2 and 1 are nothing but uh, specifying the uh, locations or uh, positions of the point. So when we uh, replace these equations as per our comfort or uh, uh, group the point terms together that is the pressure and velocity at the second point terms together. So we will be obtaining equations such as uh, P2 plus rho V2 square by 2 equal to uh, P1 plus rho V1 square by 2. This can be interchanged according to your comfortability. So uh, this is the Benoli's equation and when we are considering a constant uh, a streamline the P plus half rho V square is uh, a constant term. So these both equations are basically the Bernoulli's equation and uh, it is nothing but the Newton's second law applied to fluid mechanics application. Now let's get into the case of Pitot static tube and what has this equation uh, do to it. Here, here we are having a different kind of Pitot static arrangement that, uh, uh, that is uh, the static port and the Pitot port are separate to separate instruments. So uh, let us consider the port A is a static port and uh, point B is a Pitot or a total port. So the uh, pressure and velocity at uh, point A is uh, P and uh, V1. At point B, the pressure is P0, which is also termed as the total pressure and uh, velocity is brought to zero at this point as there is no further moving uh, down the path so the velocity is brought to zero so in order to uh, reduce the velocity the pressure has to be increased so this increase in pressure is known as the total pressure and it will al always be greater than the static pressure so from Bernoulli's equation when we apply this to this particular case for point A and B for point A, it is uh, pressure P plus half rho V square. The velocity over the point A is uh, 1, V1. So V1 square, uh, which is equal to the uh, point B case, which is uh, uh, P naught, the total pressure, plus half rho V2 square. So V2 is basically 0 at that point, as the velocity is brought to 0 at the pit out tube. So V2 is 0, so this whole term gets cancelled out. It will be just uh, remaining with uh, P plus half rho V1 square is equal to P0. Here, the P term is the static pressure and half rho V square term is the dynamic pressure which is also uh, denoted as Q and uh, P0 is the total pressure. So when we sum the static pressure and the dynamic pressure, we obtain the total pressure. Now, uh, we can rearrange this particular equation in order to find out the B term. So when we rearrange it, uh, it uh, the static pressure goes to the right hand side and it uh, uh, transforms to a negative one. So P0 minus P and the two gets uh, to the right hand side and uh, it gets into multiplication and into the numerator. And when the row gets into the right hand side, it uh, turns it to a denominator. So we will be obtaining B. So the velocity is derived when we up, uh, substitute the total pressure and uh, static pressure's uh, difference and the density of it, we can obtain the flow velocity. And this uh, derivation or uh, velocity equation is pretty good for incompressible flows. For compressible flow, we need to take the density as varying. So it is different from it. Now we will define the airspeeds as we know how the velocity is measured. Indicated airspeed is the airspeed which is simply that uh, is read off of an airspeed gauge connected to a pitot static system. So basically if we connect a uh, gauge, differential gauge to the pitot static system, the value read over there is the indicated airspeed. So when uh, we get into the calibrated airspeed, it is just the indicated airspeed adjusted for pitot system position and installation error. So pitot and uh, static system 
may be arranged in different locations of the aircraft and uh, in different angular orientations so based on the manufacturer's uh, design this particular uh, thing will be having an error if it is placed in some other location due to the design feasibility so this has to be corrected and this uh, error when corrected is known as the calibrated airspeed so when the calibrated airspeed is further uh, calibrated using the standard sea level density so basically in this equation when we use the density when we replace the density with the standard sea level density that is 1.225 uh, kilogram per meter cube uh, we will be obtaining the equivalent airspeed so equivalent airspeed we can see is the square root of to, uh, twice the pressure difference divided by the standard sea level density there is another formula for uh, equivalent airspeed which can be derived from the true airspeed such as uh, true uh, equivalent airspeed is equal to true airspeed times the square root of uh, ratio of the true density at that altitude divided by the standard sea level density now when we uh, also uh, get into the true airspeed uh, defining it the true airspeed uh, can be uh, basically de uh, defined from the equivalent airspeed itself so when uh, we replace the density term of this by the density at that particular altitude that is if we somehow are capable or able to measure the actual air uh, density at that particular altitude we can obtain the true airspeed so here when we replace the density term with the actual density at uh, that altitude uh, we will obtain the true airspeed so for better obtaining a clear perspective of this uh, particular topic you can refer the introduction to flight book by jd anderson the seventh edition of it and the 4.11 section of it and uh, we need to know the practical significance of airspeed so in aviation basically if you consider there are no other systems uh, in aircraft uh, when you once take off from the runway and you get up into cruising you uh, won't be having some landmark or some other uh, sign to show that you have reached your destination and you have to descend and land so when you're cruising at some particular altitude you need to know what you are doing so uh, where you are actually so in that case how will you measure that or how will you know that uh, where you are so consider that you are at this point and you need to know that you have to descend uh, within this particular distance and we are assuming that there are no other systems such as G gps and other kind of uh, navigation systems so in this case you need to know what air speed you are traveling that is if you know the speed at which you are traveling you know that if you want to cover about 50 kilometers you know the capability of aircraft and uh, if you travel about uh, say 20 kilometers per hour speed so or 25 kilometers per hour speed uh, you will be knowing that you can cross the destination within two hours of time so you will be able to plot the actual mission plan based on this so for this you need to know what is airspeed and how to use it there are further uh, proceedings such as uh, green limit uh, the yellow limit and the red limit red limit is the extreme limit of the airspeed which you should not exceed and the yellow limit is the safe range uh, green is the optimized range so uh, that's it for this session we did know about the airspeed and the measurement techniques and we also know the types of airspeed and its definition we also know the formula for uh, integrated uh, equivalent and true airspeed that's it for this session thank you let's crack gate aerospace engineering